Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be going over how you can create a custom field history tracking object in your org. Now I'm doing this because the native uh, field history tracking in Salesforce could have some limitations, such as storing the records for up to 18 months, or uh, only allows field history tracking up to 20 fields. Now with something custom, you can definitely bypass all that based on your storage, of course. And also, there is another issue uh, right here. And you know, it seems to be common as there is an ID exchange here, and it is open right here, 50,000 points, 5,000 votes. It's open, but not planned. So, wow, 2007. So for anyone that's watching, you guys can up upvote this. So let's read over this. It says reporting on field history tracking of a custom object is not available if the object is a detail of a master detail relationship. Reason, the existing reports can't drive sharing from another table. As it states here as the example, if the custom object was a child of an account and defined as having a parent control, the sharing visibility, then the report would have to use the sharing on the account to determine which history rows to display. This capability has not been implemented. Although this is uh, somewhat of an issue, there's also a workaround such as creating flows, reporting snapshots, or uh, changing the relationship. I'm pretty sure the, f the, the last two are not the most optimal solutions. Uh, I don't think you want to switch from a master detail relationship to a lookup. There's a reason why it was a master detail relationship. Uh, reporting snapshots, uh, mm, there are some limitations with this. I do have a video on that, so I will leave a link in the description for the reporting snapshot on how you can set it up. Uh, we're gonna use this one, except we're gonna use a flow. And there are some prerequisites that you will need in order to achieve this. Let us look right here. So here's the example right here. Before we begin the flow implementation, there are some things you need to do. Let's use this scenario right here. As you can see, Case is the master uh, object, is the parent. And I created a custom object called bug. And uh, bug is the detail to this relationship, as you can see. Now, what is this? So I created a custom object called bug history. So for any field changes that occur in bug, we'll store in here like a storage. Let's zoom in right here. More importantly, the fields that you need in the uh, history object, in this case, the bug history object, bug as the lookup, because it needs to uh, relate to the uh, particular bug, edit date, when was say the field changed and such, when was it updated, edited by, so who edited it field, which field was updated, uh, name, is just the auto number for the object. It's just a standard, but it's not necessary to uh, place, but it's just there. New and old value. So we need to know what was the previous value and what is the new value. So what was the change and what was it previously? So that's what I want to show you right here. And uh, just to clear things up, uh, cases are usually for customer service cases, like uh, issues, but I'm just pretending that this is the uh, test case, you know, if a quality assurance analysis starts testing and, you know, creates test cases and such. But anyway, let's get on to the uh, main event. All right. So now let us go create the flow. Go to setup, the homepage, type in flow. And you want to click on new flow on the top right. we're going to create a record trigger flow. Now, which object do you want to trigger on? We're going to use the bug object. So bug, when do you want to trigger? Uh, you can do updated. It could be either created or updated, but I'm just going to do updated. All right, now we're going to add a condition I am going to add 
a few fields that I'm going to track. So environment, let's do is changed, true. Couple more fields. And this is only going to trigger once uh, values uh, from these fields uh, change. And this is going to be more of an after save flow after the record is saved. So we're done with that. Oh, before we move on, let's uh, let's be smart and uh, save this. Bug, save. All right, now we're going to add what we need to add. So let's do a decision element. So the first one, let's do did in far change. Yes. So from here, we're going to select the record. So record, we're going to do environment. And we're going to do does not equal. So it's going to compare the prior value with the value that was uh, submitted. Environment, okay. Then we're going to do, uh, so once it goes to yes, we're going to do a create record. We're gonna call this create in value. Okay, create one record, but we're going to separate. And where is this going? It's going to the bug history object. Now we're going to add some fields here. Okay, let's add the fields. So obviously, add the bug. And we're going to do just the ID. Okay, we're going to put edit date and you can put last modified date, but I'm just going to use the flow when it kicks off. So I'm just going to do current date time. I'm going to do edit it by. And then from here, I'm actually going to do a quick formula. Okay, so we're going to do a formula. I'm going to call this uh, a full name. This API. So we're going to do uh, text. Then I'm going to add. I do have a formula, so I'm just going to just copy and paste this. So it's going off the user, and then I'm kind of concatenating it and separating it. And the first name and last name of the user. So, should be that. Oh, I forgot to check one thing. Okay, it's valid. Got to make sure. All right, continuing on, going to put field. And then this, I'm just going to put the text. Because since this is just environment, then we're going to add new value and what it's going to be it's going to be record environment and then old value then it's going to be record prior environment all right so let's see that so this is just one piece of the puzzle 
Now we do have four records. Now you can put as many as you like, but I'm just using four records for example. So I'm going to show you what we could do. Copy this element and put it right here. Paste. I'm going to copy this element as well and paste. All you have to do is just change the labels, really. So for this one, let's just do... Let's just do... Status change. Yes, status. APIs, API names can't be the same. And we just changed this to record status. Same thing here, record prior status, record prior status. And then right here, create. Status value. Let me just change this to status. That's it, the text value right here. We just go to record and status. Record prior status. I'll go ahead and finish off the rest. Okay, so I just finished up uh, adding the rest of the values. As you can see, status, environment, uh, severity. As you can see, it's all identical. You just have to change the values. What this will do is just kind of just trickle down going through each decision uh, till it meets. And uh, well, till it meets and till it ends. So let's let's do a quick test. Okay, let's go to uh, debug and let's find a bug. So let's do V6. So this is triggering on an update. Let's see, so which one was it? So severity, we'll do medium. Status, we'll do in progress. Version, we'll do two. And we'll do, just for the heck of it, Okay, one, so run. Right here, now you see that uh, has been completed. It's gone through some uh, decision. So it did, it, it was true, the condition right here. So because the values from record environment, record prior environment did not meet. And so it evaluated the true, so that's why I went to yes. So as you can see, the new value is QA1 and the prior value is QA. Okay, same thing with the uh, same thing with the uh, status. So it was null, but uh, but in progress. So it should be just blank, really. Same thing with version, create version. But anyway, enough of this. Let's see the real test. So just go to activate, click on activate, I meant to say. So now this flow is live and ready. Now I forgot to one, mention one thing. You have to make sure you have the related list appearing in the bug for this case. So let's go to page layout, go to bug lay, layout. And let us add something from the related list, bug histories. Let's put that there and let's uh, customize this. Click on the wrench right here and let's add what we want the users to see and what we want to see. So let's do, let's do, Let's 
edit date, edit by, field, old value, new value. Uh, you know what? Let's do descending and then press OK. OK, so that's all there. Make sure you have that and click on save on the page layout. Yes. Now let's go to the example. So here we are. Bug triple zero six. Let's do some changes. Okay. Let's do one point one. Let's call this just prepod. Go to high. Let's do in progress. Click on save. Go to related. Okay. Now, as you can see, with bug 0006, you can see the edit date, what was changed. As you can see, this was previously QA. Now, a new value is preprod. Status, it was null. Now, it's in progress. Uh, basically, it works as expected. So... Let's go back to the flow right here. So even if you just change one thing, it doesn't have to be multiple things. Let's see what is at the end. Let's just do severity change. So we'll do severity change. Do medium. So as you can see, uh, it met one of the triggers, which was severity went down. So even if, you know, it didn't meet these decisions, that's fine. Uh, it'll still keep going down and down and it won't fail and it'll go down to severity and it's been successful. Check out the links below for more resources or other videos. But yeah, that's all I have for you. Hope this uh, video was helpful. Please like, share and subscribe. Until next time, I'll catch you in the next one.